guys, so this is the UFC 214 morning after show. I am just going to talk about the main event only. And it's 5 5 in total. Okay, so let's get into it. The opening card of the pay per view show we have Vulcan Odismar versus Jimmy Minowa, which Vulcan won 32 seconds into the first round. Holy shit. Okay, you guys, it's um, to me one moment. I'm just looking at my notes here. 32 seconds into the first round. Cool, my friend. Vulcan, welcome to the light heavyweight championship title. <laughs> wow. Because um, after that knockout, the, refi the referee stepped in and Jimmy Wano Manawa. He have noted what he was doing. He was still grappling. He was still going for the referee. He's like, I'm still in, I'm still in it, but you're not. The way the fight is over. It's done. Yeah. Wow. You fucked him up. <laughs> fucked him up. Falcon, good job my friend. You very impressed me. So what's next? Well for you, Vulcan Edismar. Me personally, I would like to see you. This this match you fight. This match you match up. I would like to see you fight Daniel Cormier, but that's not happening. And I'll tell you why soon. At the end. So my second option is Glover Texera. Glover just come off a loss, and you just come off one, and he's he is slightly above you when it comes to the ranking. So I believe that he would be a very good, uh, he's a very good test to see where you're at at this division. And if you could be Glover, you're like, you are my friend, you are the next challenger for, for title. But if you can't, well, you can't. <laughs> well, Glover, he is an old guard and you're the new up and comer. You could be the man, he, to me. Glover is a gatekeeper. You gotta be the gatekeeper. Okay. And for Jimmy Manawa, I'd like to see if I against Misha Kurovanov. Is that what you say? Kurovanov? Kurovanov? Okay. Let's say um, Mishka. Okay. Um, the one thing that both have in common as of 24 hours ago is that both of you lost the Vulcan. Jimmy, you lost about you lost a few fights in a row. This would be a very good fight for you to reestablish yourself. And Mishka, you haven't fought since you lost the Vulcan. So this is uh, a win-win for both you guys if you could win. But if what when you lose, which you will, oh my goodness, it's do or die or I believe the bell tour is calling. Next, we have. Robbie Lawler versus Donald Cerrone. Robbie Lawler won to a uni unanimous decision, 29-20 across the board. You guys, I'm not gonna lie. I picked um I picked Robbie Lawler as the winner between these two, but I with my pick, if you guys see my pre fight pr prediction, I thought that Robbie Lawler would just he was just gonna run to Donald Cerrone. It's just the fact that he's been competing at 170 for a very long time, and this is Don Sony like third fight. I'm like, this is not your class, my friend. I was wrong. I don't mind admitting it. Don Sony he did very well, he did very well, but it's not enough to win. But my prediction from my from my previous prediction, I thought that uh. Robert Lauder, which he's just gonna walk through him, which he did not. He came up with 29 28. Kudos to both you guys. Donald, I'm still a fan, but I don't know if you compete at 170. You must ask yourself this is what I believe is that you must ask yourself what would I like to do? Am I, am I a prize fighter or am I, be, or am I fighting to be the best in the world? For you to, Donald, look at me, for you to be the best in the world, 
You cannot compete at 170. These monsters will fuck you up. You need to move back down to 155, the lightweight, where you are the bigger guy, and that is your chance to be the world champion. Besides that, at 170, you cannot win, my friend. I'm sorry, but you cannot win. And for Robbie Lawler, holy shit, <laughs> you are still one of the best. I'm very glad that you win, which I choose, I pick you to win. You won. Good job. I don't know what I don't know what else to say. You won. Good job. So what is the matchup? My pick, my matchup for these two guys. Let's start off with the winner. Robert Lawler. I'd like to see you fight against Steven Wonderboy Thompson. You my friend are a former champion. Steven Thompson. He is a former title challenger to I'm drawing blank. <laughs> I shouldn't, but it's to um, Tyron Woodley. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I just did that. And it's to um, Tyron Woodley. Okay? You're a former, former champion. Tyron Woodley is the champion right now. And Stephen Thompson is the former title challenger. And according to UFC ranking, as of this moment, Robbie Lawler, you are number two. Stephen Thompson, you are number four. The fuck's number three? Okay, this might be wrong. Damien Maya is number three. Sorry, guys. So, Robert Lawler is number, is number two. Stephen Thompson is number four. Damien Maya is number three, which he just competed for the title tonight. And... I believe that if you could beat Stephen Thompson, you could put yourself back into to, into the title mix. You know what? At one one seventy at the welterweight, there's no one else is out there. You have a very good shot, and so does some um, Stephen Thompson. So, to me, as a viewing public, as an audience, I would like to see who is going to step up. I would like to see best of the best competing for the best of the title of their division. This is my pick. You rob Rob Lawler against Steven Thompson. Okay. Let's move on to your your previous opponents, Donald um, Cerrone. I'd like to see him against Rafael Dos Anjos. Okay. I realize that both of you guys have fought previously at 155, but however, it's 155. Donald, uh, he fucked you up. <laughs> but that's uh that's 155. And uh, you lost your fight tonight, and does that just won his um his last fight his his first fight at one event that at one seventy that I could recall, or at least in DFC. So I believe that this would be a very good matchup rematch at a different weight at a, a different division. I would like to see how the the weight cut will affect both of you. I would like to see how you guys will compete. I would like to have you guys like you know what I believe that. This is this is more of your both natural weight class. You guys don't have too much weight. You guys are healthy. You know what? Let's, let's compete at your best. Let's see what happens. This is a rematch at a different weight division. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what happened. That's my three pick. That's my fight for Don, Donald Cerrone. Him against Rafael Dos Santos. Okay. And I am going to move on to Chris Cyborg versus Tonya Avenger. Holy shit. I picked Cyborg to win. But uh, however, I picked her to win on round one. Not round three. TKO. Wow. Tony Avenger. Respect. <laughs> I thought that you were um, another sacrificial lamb. Just to come in. Just to give cyborg props and she can run run all over you first round done deal color night pay me and anthony cham let's see what's up let's see what's coming up but uh tonya you put up a very good wow i am impressed i'm very impressed okay i'm not gonna bullshit i picked chris cyborg as well it's not just the fact that you lost it's how she won but how long it took her to beat you I pick it like round one. She'd be in round three. 
to you like you very durable and welcome to UFC okay so my my five matchup for these two ladies we have Chris Cyborg I would like to see her fight against Megan Anderson I realized that Megan is suffering from a serious some um, injury but however this was the original ma matchup before she got injured and yeah I want to see what happened Megan take care of yourself get healthy come back and compete but there, there is a bit of conflict it's just the fact that in October I believe that Chris Cyborg Chris Cyborg contract is up to me I don't know how that's possible well, I guess her contract is by per month, like per month contract to year end, not per fight. So this, so she must compete before October, or else she's no longer a UFC fighter. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how that works because before she moved into into the UFC, she was in Invicta champion as well, and Invicta, the like essential a, a farm. A farm like to the UFC. Any ladies that the UFC want from Invicta, the Invicta is like, okay, take them. Perfect example, Cyborg. The next perfect example is Tony Amager. They need a division, they need a fighter. They need a white or DFC called Channel Carp. Sharp. Is it Sharp or Carp? Well, it's called, Ch it's called Shannon. And we need, we need a fighter who, who's willing to step up. And in this case, it was Tonya. So I don't know what's gonna happen there. She's not going anywhere. Like she won, she won her fight, her previous fight, and she received the federal title. And for winning the fight without without any bonus clause, she received two hundred thousand dollars. There's no other. Uh, there's no other promotion that's willing to pay her that much. So Cyborg is not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere. Okay. Matchup Cyborg versus Mechanison when Mechanison is healthy. So let's get back to uh, her opponent is Tony Avenger. Tony Avenger before she stepped up to fight Cyborg at 145 at UFC 214, she was the Invicta 1 135 bantamweight champion. Tonya, thank you for stepping up. You are not going anywhere. The DFC owes you, and you are going to compete, but the next time it's not going to be at 145. It's going to be at 135. And to me, your perfect opponents for me, to, for your introduction to 145 weight division in DFC would be Julian Penne. Julian Penne just came off to loss to. Shevchenko, I believe. I don't have that notes on me right now at the moment. But according to according to the UFC ranking, she's ranked number three in the woman bantamweight. In the one in the woman bantamweight, I was called a champion. She's not a champion. Um, I would really like to see how she compete at this level, and Jillian Penne would be a very good test to see, to see where she stands. So, yeah. Let's see what happened. You and Juliana. I love both of you, but Tony, I love you more. You want me over. Juliana, you need to stop up. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the coming event, which is Tyron Woodley versus Damien Maya. Tyron Woodley won against Damien Maya. Unanimous decision to retain his Walter title. I don't want to say. A lot of people, they're very upset of how this fight turned out. They call it, it's a boring fight. They're expecting more. There's no action. You know what? Fuck it. It is what it is. It is what it is. Tyron, I'm a fan. You did what you need to do during the fight. You stopped a 24th takedown attempt from Demi Maya, which is a three-time world Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Jiu World Championship. 
the champion. How you hate that? Like you can't. You just can't. I okay. I don't say. I love drink from a jar. This is uh, it remind me from the Discovery Channel show about like moonshine, moonshine something. Mo something about moonshine. I, I love it. Moonshine outlaw. Yeah, every time I drink this. So, but I'm not drinking moonshine. It's um, uh, it's lemon water. Lemon's gone now. Just, just water with a bit of lemon at the bottom, which I like it. Okay, Tyrone. Good job, my friend. Despite all the hater, who gives a shit? Honestly, who really care? You went out there. You won your match, you still champ, you still have this title, and you will still get paid. At the end of the day, the title means a lot, but the what, what's mean more than the title? It's the money. You gotta get paid, and you are gonna get paid, and as a champ, you get a pay-per-view pay point, and if he serves me right, at the moment, the moment that you lose your title, your base would drop drastically as um, DJ Dillashaw he took a big cut when he lost his title to Dominic Cruz wow my friend good job and uh, my, my matchup for you is nothing it's like you know what Sit back, relax. July just ended. There's only a few months left until the end of the year. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself, enjoy your family, take some time off. Let your body heal. And and watch the fight between Michael Bisping and George St. Pierre from UFC 217 Madison Square Garden. Despite who will win that fight, I believe that you have a, you have an opportunity to make history. If George win, he will move back down to 170. He will try to challenge you for the welterweight title, so he could call himself a dual weight two division champion. Okay, absolutely. You you can't blame the guy, but what's benefit for you? You're gonna get paid. <laughs> if you win or lose, if you win. You just beat a legend, which is George St. Pierre. Your legacy will be the best welterweight competitor in the world of all time. You get to keep your title, you get a preview cut, and the preview sell against George St. Pierre. It's gonna be like at least a million dollars. Or sorry, a million preview buy. If you get like what, like two dollars, three dollars? Okay, let's compromise. 2.5 cents, two dollars and fifty cents. You're gonna walk away with that one fire loan, two million five hundred thousand dollars. Plus your base paid, as according to this, is five hundred thousand dollars. You're gonna walk away with three million dollars for just one fight for a loss. If you win, you're gonna walk away with three million dollars. And the one thing that no one can take away from you is that you're gonna beat George Saint Pierre. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no and if a buts about it, just sit back, relax, wait, heal your body, watch the fight, UFC 217, let's see what happened, and let's see if George lose. Okay, if George, George lose to Michael, he's, just, he's still gonna come back down to 170 to fight you for the title. Regardless, it's like, it's a win-win for you, regardless of who wins, because you're still gonna fight George. And however, if George is like, fuck that, I'm, I'm not gonna fight you. You will always have this opportunity to move up to fight Michael Bisbane for you yourself to leg leg legitimize your career as also another two division champion. And what that comes with it? Money, my friend. You and Michael Bisbane will get paid. Michael, he said that he never ever had received a million dollar paycheck from the UFC with, with all his life. After his fight 
with George, he will see more than a million. And when he beats George, and he will accept your, your challenge, he will receive like another million plus, maybe two million plus. So it's a win for you, it's a win for Michael, but it's more for you. It's the fact that if you win, you have two titles. If you lose, you retain the title and you win under like two million dollars. So, sit back with my friend, let's see what happened. Okay, let's move on to Damien Maya. So, uh, Damien, I watched the post fight press conference. You said that you want to get back into the con as soon as you can, or as soon as possible. You would like to compete again before the end of the year. Me personally, I disagree. Okay. Get back, relax, and you know, I believe that you you should go back and just take some time with your family and just enjoy your life. You are 39, you are going 40. You need to talk to your friends, family, coach, your loved ones. You know what? You, why are you here? Like, are you here to be a, to be just another person to compete and to win money? Or do you want to be one of the best in the world? Because as, as of right now, you could always make money. You have your own dojo in Brazil. And... You are a recognizable, recognizable, recognizable name. You will always get paid. Your value is always increasing. And if the UFC cut you, Beltor is like running star. But but however, I believe that money is not a major a major driving factor for you as a person. I believe this is me this is my opinion. I believe that you really want to be the best in the world at what you do is competing at competing and winning championship at the highest level and I believe that you can but not at this moment not right now you need to go back and sit down with your loved ones and reflect because you are lost right now there's, there's nowhere for you to go. You couldn't move up to 185. This murder would kill you. And at 170, you need to put together about four or five win again for you to challenge for the and for you, for you to have another shot at 170 title. So yeah, so just take some time off and reflect. That's it, my friend. Enjoy your life. I don't want to see you compete again until 2018. Damien, I love you. You're my bro. Enjoy the rest of your my friend. Some seeds. I got some seeds. Ah. Okay, so let's head on to the main event. John Bones Jones versus. Daniel Cormier. Holy shit. Daniel Jones. Especially the Jones. The winner. Welcome back. Don't mess up. But however, I'm very interested to see what happened with the next two to three weeks. The reason why I said that the reason why I said that is that Tennis result, John. I hope you're not partying too much. You could party, but not too much because if you get flagged, now what? You just came back from one year suspension, and your second suspension from USADA is gonna be two years, I believe. And you win against, then you come in tonight, it's gonna be turned into no contest. However, I don't think that is gonna be the case. I hope not. <laughs> okay. And Daniel. <laughs> Shit. What happened, my friend? You were doing so well. I, I had you up like two rounds. Two rounds to nothing. Going going to round number three before you got knocked out. Or TKO, TKO knocked out. Damn. It was a good fight. It's a good and better fight. And this fight, I realized that Daniel made $1 million as the base pay for this fight. 
But to him, it's, you know what? Money will come and go, but legacy, history will stay there forever. And he lost. He lost to John. And his his uh, interview with Joe Rogan, when he cried, it melted my heart because I feel for the guy. He gave everything he got and he lost. He just lost a better man. Wrong day, wrong night. Shit. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Daniel, I love you. You want the best. Wrong time, my friend. Wrong time, wrong error, wrong opponent. Heavyweight? But Kane is there. I can see you beating, I can see beating him, Stipe. Well, as long as John stay at light heavyweight. Okay, well, enough of that. I'm being emotional because I like, I like Daniel Cormier. I believe he's a great guy. He's, he's, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot, there are, there's a lot of people that boot him. I'm not one of them. I'm a fan. It sucks to see him cry, but that's him be- being himself. This is him being emotional. I'm very, I'm very happy that I saw that. It just, you know what? Be yourself. Don't try to be fake. Be genuine, and he's being genuine. Okay. Okay. So let's get to the fight matchup. The, the next fight matchup. Let's start with John Jones. John Jones Bones. John John Bones Jones. <laughs> uh. I'll see him fight against Alexander Gustafsson. There's nothing. There's no one. There's no one else at light heavyweight, besides Alexander. And even John said that he is, his toughest competitor at light, at light heavyweight. So why not? Let's see what happened. And on that fight, there was a few people called to fight for Alexander, and they believed that the judge swayed toward John, because he was the champ. Under the same with that you must be the champ to be the champ. So yeah, to me I saw that fight as well. I thought it was fifty fifty. I thought John won. Hmm. It is what it is. But another matchup is uh Brock Lesnar at heavyweight. I don't mind that as well. I don't mind that either. Me personally I would like to see John against Brock Lesnar at the end of the year and give the rest of the light heavyweight division to develop himself and to see a true number number one contender step up and I believe that's gonna be Vulcan so but despite that we need to wait so the next one for John a light heavyweight I would like to see him defend his title against Alexander Gustafsson However, for super fight at heavyweight, Brock Lesnar, if you could pass the use out of pre-fight um test- testing. So, John, your choice, your pick. You and Dave, see you guys talk it out. I would like to guys compete against one of those two. And for Daniel, I don't want to see him fight again at... Well, I want to see him fight, but not this year. I don't know how many fight he's got left in his contract with the UFC, and he's no longer the champion. So there's gonna be a flaw within his his contract. When you're no longer the champion, you are gonna take a pay cut. You are gonna get. You are no longer gonna get the the pay per view chair, pay per pay view points. So. I've seen you on UFC on Fox. You are doing very well. You are analyst, as an as an analyst, you are doing great. I don't know, Daniel. You know, my friend, take uh take the rest of, take the rest of the year off, and uh come back uh twenty eighteen. Okay, so let's move on to my pick, my three stars of the UFC two fourteen. Okay, number three, I have Vulcan. Odesmar, welcome to the Light Heavyweight Title Challenger. 
Welcome to the max. You just made it. Number two, I have Chris Cyborg. It's Chris Cyborg. And she's uh, this division was created because of her. Jermaine Duran, I mean, what the fuck? Like, why are you here? You should never consider yourself as the first ever featherweight champion. Because you won versus Holly Holm, which you, po which you poke her eyes twice. And then you don't want to fight the number one title challenger against Chris Eibart, which is the rightful crown, crown to the throne, the rightful queen to the throne. Number two, my number two is Chris Eibart, and of course, number one, John Jones. The king is back. The crown is his, John. Don't fuck up. <laughs> Don't fuck up, man. Like, I know that you are still young. You like to party. We all like to party. I like to party. Not as much as you. I wish I could, but I can't. So, my friend, take it easy. Humble yourself. Welcome back to the UFC. You are the king of the light heavyweight division. The title is your crown. Keep it. Because I don't see anyone challenge you for, for a very long time. And another thing go up to heavyweight. You get to, you get to keep both titles. You are the GOAT. Great of, greatest of all time. Let me repeat that. Greatest of all time. The GOAT. Welcome back, John. I am your number one fan. Okay. Okay, guys. So that is my recap for you. UFC 214. I hope you like it. This is my first episode. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and uh, you know what, just comment, just tell me what I need to do to improve this channel, and what you see behind me, this is, I am recording from my attic, so the scenery is not going to change for a while, so, thank you for your time, thank you for your time, thank you for listening to me, take care, I'll see you soon, have a good night, peace.